This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today we are going to cover tips and tricks to help you absolutely dominate in Age of Wonders 4. Let's get to it. The first tip I have for you is don't spend all of your Imperium right away. The game kind of pushes you to do that with the tool tips and the little pop-ups and stuff and tells you to spend it. And the biggest reason for this is that Imperium is used for a lot of little different odds and ends besides just spending it on your Empire development. In a lot of the cases, you will be unlocking stuff in your empire development that you don't necessarily need right away and when you activate it the perks that you get from it activate right away and there are pop-up choices that can happen where sometimes your most favorable option is going to be to spend imperium so because of this it makes sense to always hold on to some of it and not spend it all right as soon as you get it and that leads me into the next tip which is to pick and choose specific traits from the Empire development tree. Don't just go down the line unlocking every single one of them as they are available. And some of them are only a single time use and should technically really only be used in emergencies. And some of them are going to be way more beneficial to you in your current playthrough depending on what your current situation is than others. Next tip I have for you is to make use of outposts. Outposts are extremely powerful for a few different reasons. One of those reasons is that you can use them to claim special nodes on the map. So if you form an outpost, near a node, you can then give it the work camp upgrade, which will allow you to claim a single province that is next to it. Meaning you can then claim that node and it will go towards your empire's income and in whatever form of income that node gives you. The other really great thing about outposts is that they can have teleporters on them. So once you unlock the teleporter ability, you can place teleporters on your outpost and teleport to wherever you want to on the map. So yes, make outposts, upgrade them so that they can't get raided easy and use them to your advantage, capturing large chunks of the map. This next one is one that took me a little bit to figure out, so I wanted to share it with all of you so that if you didn't know how to do it, now you do. So there are special buildings in the game, and there's a couple different ones. The one I'm going to show here is the mob camp. The mob camp allows you to spawn your units at it instead of your city center. To do this is really simple, but it's not super clear. So all you need to do is click on the building and then click the little twisty arrows down there at the bottom next to it that you would normally click if you were going to switch the building type. Instead of giving you the option to switch the building type, it gives you the option to spawn units there. If you want to switch it back, all you need to do is click this option again and it will give you the option to switch it back to your city center. Population stability can have massive effects on your city, so managing this is super important. Note that if your population is unstable, it adds huge percentage-based debuffs on the output of resources that your city can make. But the same can also be said for going in the opposite direction. The higher the stability, the more resources your city will make. Managing your city stability is not very difficult to do, although if you're a first time player, this can get out of hand really quickly. I know it did for me. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can affect your city stability, but I'm going to quickly go over the most basic ways. This way, you should never have any stability issues. Every time you claim a province, you reduce your city stability by five. That is the default. So if if you grow your city too rapidly by expanding it out and claiming more provinces, you are going to end up with bad city stability. You can counteract this by many different ways, as I stated, but the easiest ways to do it is just to upgrade your city center. Doing this will give you more stability. You can also make a tavern and a bathhouse, which will show up as you upgrade your city center. Now, a pro tip, if your city stability gets out of hand and you need to increase the stability quickly, is you can give that city a whispering stone. It's me many hours to realize that you could give the Whispering Stone to one of your own cities and that it does give the city a stability bonus. Now this stability bonus isn't instant but it is a lot. It is 3 per turn for 10 turns for a total of 30 extra stability. The next tip I have for you, if you are struggling at all in combat situations, mind control is insanely strong and can easily allow you to win fights that you probably otherwise should have lost. There are a few different ways to mind control but the two easiest ways are with two different units, the Lightbringer and the Nymph. You can get both of these through Tomes. The Tome of Fertility, which is a tier two Tome for the Nature Affinity, will allow you to summon the Nymph. The Beacon Tome, which is a tier two Tome for the Order Affinity, will allow you to summon the Lightbringer. Both of these units can mind control a target with a base chance of 60%, which if you lower the target's resistances, can be increased to much higher values. 
Moving on, pay attention to what is around your city and design it accordingly. For example, if there are lots of mines, then you want to make the Miner's Guild. If you're close to water, you would want to go for the Path of the Fishing Guild, and so on and so on. There are different buildings that will give you large bonuses for basically whatever situation a specific city may be in. And a good example of this is I have the Bountiful Fields Province Improvement here. This province improvement gets a bonus to it for each farm that is connected to it. So I have a large area here of possible farmland. I could have turned it into a few different things, but farmland was an option. So I put the bountiful fields here, knowing that I could connect all of these different farmlands to it. So just pay attention to these things when you are building your, out your city because it is important and it's going to get you huge bonuses. As you can see here, this is producing 27 food, 12 draft, and 5 gold every turn, and I'm only getting a negative 1 to my city stability because I have consolidated industry here. It also affects all of these other farms as well. I also have the Garden of Bliss improvement here as well, which gets bonuses when it's connected to farms and all of these other things count as farms and it counts as farms towards the bountiful fields. This next tip may be obvious to some people, mainly the vets of this game, but I just wanted to point it out because I know when I first started playing it, I felt like I needed to stick to a specific set of tomes. I started out in shadow and and I stuck to Shadow for pretty much the entire round. But don't be afraid to mix and match your tomes. There are some massive synergies that you can find between mixing and matching these tomes, some of which are insanely strong. Just because you start out with a specific one or you feel like it fits more into the roleplay style of your character that you designed or what have you, don't be afraid to mix in something that may not necessarily fit that style. It can make winning a round so much easier. This next tip I'm pretty sure is a bug, but I wanted to point it out because it is so incredibly broken and that is the spoils of destruction perk upgrade whatever these are called can be used on your own cities so basically all you need to do find a city of somebody that you want to destroy go destroy their city once you raise their city to the ground you will get a permanent increase of plus 20 gold per turn then all you need to do is rebuild that city that city will be under your control when you rebuild it then you just go into the city options and raise the city again then rebuild it then raise raise it again. Every time you do this, you increase your gold per turn by 20. This is absolutely busted and I'm pretty sure it's going to get patched, but I just wanted to tell you about it because it's absolutely insanely OP. And the last one I have for you is something that I just realized after almost 60 hours of gameplay, and that is you can capture provinces that you do not own from cities that are butted up against yours. So for example, if you are at war with your neighbor and they have a province that is right next to yours, you want to expand in that province and your city can expand, all you need to do is take a unit over to that province and raid it. After you have raided it, you then click on the province, click the little twisty arrows, and it gives you the option to capture it. This is incredibly handy if you are playing a nation that is at war with everybody all the time. All right, and that is pretty much it for this one. If you found this video helpful and informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Age of Wonders 4 content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.